Good morning, everybody. It's Kara with Bluebird Homestead. It's a gorgeous morning to do a little walk around the garden. There's lots of new flowers and vegetables in the garden that I'm excited to show you guys today. If you're new here, my name's Kara. We're gardening in zone 7A in Virginia. And this is our raised bed garden here behind me. I just did a full garden tour video earlier in June on our channel. I'll link that in the description where I went through pretty much each individual plant. So today I'm just gonna give you guys the updates and do a little walk around showing you things that are changing. This time of year, the garden is changing pretty rapidly with the heat and the warmth making all the plants very happy. The first thing right here in this front bed are the nasturtiums and some dahlias that are flowering. These nasturtiums have two different colors. There's orange on this side and a coral salmon color on this side. I'm pretty sure it's probably two different plants, but I think it's kind of fun. They grew together sort of like one big clump with the two different colors on it. I think that's pretty. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus, but there's also a spider web right here. I think spider webs with the morning dew on them look so neat. Plus the morning dew just on the leaves of all the different plants is so beautiful. Right next to the nasturtiums in this bed, there are some dahlias that are flowering. There's lots of new buds coming onto these dahlias too. I really like this kind of almost daisy shaped dahlia. I think it's called a collarette dahlia with the sort of rounded edges. I think it's really cute. The rest of my dahlias are growing nicely in front of them. Some are definitely bigger than others, but that probably just has to do also with variety as well. Across from this bed where we just were, I have dahlias planted all along the edges and some of the dahlias even have a few buds on them. So we should have lots of flowers here soon. I talk about it a lot, so I'm pretty excited if you can't tell to see just this whole front L-shaped bed covered with dahlias. But we don't have to wait for other flowers because there are some other flowers blooming in the garden too. Over here next to the nasturtiums, my hollyhocks is now blooming. The bachelor's button behind the hollyhocks is still blooming too. This hollyhocks is just completely covered in flower buds all the way up to the top of the stems. So I'm really excited about those. I think they look really beautiful. I love that kind of light champagne blush pink color of the flowers. The bees seem to really be liking it too because there's a lot of bees all over that plant. I have quite a few more flowers blooming in the back of the garden and I'll show you those as we get down that way. But here up in front, this bed here is primarily tomatoes. There's basil planted all along the front edge of this bed. So we'll have lots of basil this summer and hopefully be able to preserve a bunch and dry it for the winter time too. I haven't had a ripe tomato yet, but most of these plants are covered with green ones. So it'll be here before we know it. Lots and lots of green tomatoes. These are some cherry tomatoes here. And we also have bigger slicer green tomatoes growing. I have a lot of different tomato varieties growing and I figured I'd wait until they're all ready to be picked and then I'll show you all the different varieties and line them up so you can see the color of the fruit and get a better idea of what each variety is. The beds of strawberries beside the tomatoes are pretty much done for the year. These are just June bearing strawberries. They're not ever bearing. Ever bearing, they produce fruit all summer long. The June bearing, just like the name is like May, June time frame. There is some yarrow planted on the backside and there's a couple little flowers starting to pop up on the yarrow. Of our long skinny beds with the cattle panels, they're 12 foot long each. Four of them have pretty much primarily tomatoes on them. We should have a pretty good tomato harvest this year, hopefully. I've planted other things amongst the tomatoes too. This bed, for instance, has onions on either side of the tomato plants. And this first bed I showed you had basil on the other side. And on this side, it has peppers. 
We've been harvesting off of the peppers here the last few days. They're starting to produce. These are corbachi peppers. I need to come in here and pick some of these. Our onions are bulbing out too. We have a normal sweet onion. I believe the variety is candy onion. And then we have a red onion as well. They're all bulbing out pretty nicely. We still have several weeks though until we'll be harvesting our onions here. This bed here to the left has tomatoes about three quarters of the way down the bed. And then at the very end, we have some cucumbers. There's even a couple little cucumber fruit growing. Across from the cucumbers, these are tomatillo plants, or tomatillo. Lots of flowers all over them. Something has been nibbling at them though. There's lots of holes in the leaves. But the plant still seems to be growing and not minding it. We don't spray or use any chemicals in our garden. I just kind of let the plants fend for themselves, honestly. I mean, I will come out here when we get like squash bugs and things and squish the eggs and pull off pests that I see manually, like tomato worms and stuff like that. But we don't spray anything. And the fertilizers I use are all organic. Compost, I think, is the best thing you can put on your garden. But I also use Biotone Starter Fertilizer by Espoma when I plant the initial plant in the home. And then if I see deficiencies, I'll try to come in and amend those uh, with fish fertilizer or something else like that. So even though there's holes and some bug damage on those plants, I'm not going to worry about it. I'd rather the plant die than eat stuff that's been sprayed by a lot of things. If you spray, I'm not going to come after you. I just prefer that my food doesn't have any junk on it. And that's one of the great things about gardening is that you know exactly where your food comes from and you don't have to worry or question about how it was grown. I have to mention these sunflowers behind me. They're taller than I am now. It seems like just the other day in the last garden tour, they were like down here. They have doubled really shot off in size. There's a couple little flowers starting to form. These sunflowers are just a mix of seeds that I saved from sunflowers that I grew last year. It'll be interesting to see what varieties I ended up planting because I'm not 100% positive what I stuck in the ground. I'm pretty sure some of them are Lemon Queen, which is like a traditional yellow sunflower with a black center. And then I think I also have some of the like fluffy orange teddy bear type sunflowers, which I think those are kind of fun to look at. It's also interesting, the sunflowers in this bed are a little bit taller than the sunflowers in this bed, which the sun rises right there, sun's still rising. So I don't think it's a sun issue. It must just be maybe with how much compost we put in each bed or something. Other than that, they have the exact same amount of water because we do a drip irrigation system, which I highly recommend the drip irrigation system. It's been so nice not having to water the garden this year. We've had a very dry gardening season so far, not much rainfall at all. So I would have been having to come out here and actually water with the hose. And being very pregnant, the less work I have to do, the better. And I think the plants are really enjoying having consistent water on a schedule as well. Everybody seems to be pretty happy. I'll put a link to the drip irrigation system video and uh, where we bought it from in the description. Coming down past the sunflowers, in this bed I have a lot of different things climbing up this trellis next to the onions. This first vine is a honey nut squash. It's got little tiny baby squashes on it. Then across the path from the honey nut is a traditional butternut squash. Which it has some fruit setting too. Then I thought I planted cucumbers down this entire way, just one honey nut. But I'm pretty sure that's definitely a honey nut too. And just this last one at the end is cucumber. So I think I will have to plant a few more cucumbers in the garden. Which I have some space once I rip out the sugar snap peas to plant cucumbers. These are the personal sized melons. I'm going to be training these up this cattle panel as well. The ferns on all the asparagus look so pretty with all the dew on them. I think they shimmer, kind of almost like glitter. 
this really big vine coming out is the blue hubbard squash i also have some other squashes planted in this bed the blue hubbard squash has some pretty good sized fruit already starting to grow on it the sugar snap peas are getting on their last leg and they're starting to squish the corn a little bit so i need to come in and rip those out here soon i struggle sometimes with ripping out plants a little bit but i need to rip those out and then maybe i'll plant some cucumbers on those trellises as well i might give them another week or so and then it'll be time for them to go the bachelor's button has also flopped on me it's interesting because this bachelor's button here in the back flopped but the one up in the front bed that I showed you when we walked into the garden still looks perfectly fine for the most part. So I don't know if an animal came in there and made that one flop or if it was just because I didn't cut this one as much as I did the one in the front. So maybe it just had more weight to it. The other day we planted together a couple seeds and those are starting to pop up here in this bed. This is a honey nut squash. It's got some grass. I planted three of those. Those are coming up. I told you guys I had more flowers in the back of the garden, and I definitely do. Can you see all those pink frosted salmon poppies? Let me get up closer and I'll show you. We just had our first rain for what seems like has been a couple weeks and some of them got a little damaged, but for the most part, they still look beautiful. I think those are so fun. They are really large. They're like the size of a softball and they're just so fluffy. My niece said they remind her of like a cheerleader's pom-pom. I think she's kind of right. This one is even a double. I purchased this particular seed from Baker Creek. My other poppy variety is the Amazing Gray Poppy, which is a lot shorter in height. I love the dark gray purple color of the petals. It's not something you see every day in a flower. I also have some Cosmos and other flower varieties starting to pop up in this bed. The dahlias I got for Mother's Day have also been putting on some nice growth. The arched panel with the purple potted sugar snap pea uh, is kind of dying back. It's been producing some pea pods, but not as prolifically as the sugar and sugar snap pea, which is what I have planted all along the back side of the garden. Underneath these peas, I have a bed of potatoes. Those just recently started to flop in the rain that we got last night. I need to do a little test dig and see if they're almost ready to be harvested. I think I'll probably wait at least another week on that though. The pro cut sunflowers are a couple feet tall now and I do have a couple other little flower varieties starting to produce some flowers. This is Gumfrina and I have some Celosia and blue African disc daisies starting to open up. Then the next bed across has lots of flowers growing. So these are Pro Cut Sunflowers, Cosmos, which are starting to put on little buds, and zinnias. Now I do see some Japanese beetles on these zinnias. I'm gonna have to come through later and pick those off, give the chickens a treat, but we do have some buds starting to form. And this bed here, we have some zucchini forming. The zucchini has lots of flowers on it, but it also has some fruit on it too. These zucchini fruit, I don't know, maybe three or four inches long. This is the tigress zucchini. And I already see some squash bug eggs. They've already found the zucchini plants. So that's another job. I need to start coming out here and picking off squash bug eggs. The green beans on the arch panels are starting to climb up. Whenever one starts to flop down, I'm trying just to come in here and get it headed back in the right direction. Okay. 
they just attach themselves to the panel and they'll make their way up and over eventually. I do have the green beans planted on both sides of the arch, so they'll meet in the middle. I'm excited to see this tunnel this summer filled with green beans. I think the arch tunnel is really beautiful when it's all covered in plants. So I'm excited to see all those green beans growing, plus yummy green beans. I definitely love harvesting and being able to enjoy the vegetables and fruit out of the garden, but I also like it to look really pretty too. We've got some red Russian kale and lots of different lettuces doing pretty nicely in the garden right now. The broccoli's also been doing pretty well this year. I have some more out here that looks like it's ready to be harvested. I need to take care of that in the next couple days. I also think there's some cauliflower over here that might be ready to be harvested too. It's definitely been a gorgeous morning to walk through the garden. I like coming out here in the mornings before it gets too hot in the middle of the day. And plus, I love the way the sunlight and the dew look on all the plants. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, y'all.